Welcome to Eagle Live. What a break from Manoa. Interviewing your favorite USA Eagles around the globe. Tony Lambeau into the 22. Now, here's your host, Bill Baker. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. But really, just thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Glad to have you. On this episode, I was able to get Will Hooley again for a quick interview. We did the interview late last week, uh, mostly about Saracens. They just played Leicester A in their first match in months. And uh, Capella Pifoletti had two tries. KP was 7 for 7 from the tee. Uh, not KP. Will was 7 for 7 from the tee. That would have been amazing. Um, but it was great to be back, he said. It was in months. They were in front of fans, which felt electrifying. About 1,000 fans. Uh, so we talk about that, and we also talk about the state of the championship. We just found out today in the news that the championship's going to start in uh, in March and which teams are in which division as well. So we talk about that and we also talk about what he's doing now. He's doing some writing in his free time. A little more of that now with XV Rugby as well. So that and more. Enjoy the interview. Everything's fine with training at the moment. Um, but everything is fine. Can't complain really. I uh, had a game on the Saturday, which was nice, last weekend, uh, which went well. Yeah. So appreciate your support <laughs> on that. <laughs> um, it's about what you can do, really, in the moment. It's kind of take each week, week as it comes, because it seems to change every week in terms of knowing more about the championship or when it might start or how many teams might be in it. Um, yeah. So it looks like Saracens and Ealing um, – look like they're only two championship teams right now doing anything yeah you've got teams who are definitely training at the moment yeah. uh, but a lot of them are waiting for the, the government funding that should be coming in um to support them with tests um so we we, we obviously get tested weekly uh, but that costs quite a bit of money each month right so um and then when we get to competition i think you get tested pretty much twice a week so they're waiting for this money to come through. And some clubs, obviously, they, they can't go to the next stage of training, which is ultimately full contact, you know, training as normal until they have this funding. Uh, and it se there seems to be some problem with when it's arriving. Um, plus, uh, on top of that, um, I, I just think each team has got their individual problems with squad sizes, um, Different places in England are in different tiered restrictions. So to give you a very brief rundown on it, if you're in tier three, which is what we're going into, you're not allowed any crowds at, at matches. But if you're in tier two, you're allowed about, I think it's about 1,000, maybe 2,000 people. Hmm. Then if you're in tier one, you're, you're allowed at, at up to 4,000 people, depending on the size of the stadium. Um, but like, no one's going to be in tier one. And I imagine by January, after we have our Christmas uh, restrictions lifted, um, we'll probably be in another lockdown, I imagine. So I don't know what that means for clubs who yeah. obviously didn't get any ticket sales or, or anything. So it's not terribly positive. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, eh? Like I say, honestly, not in my control. So what can you do? So uh, with last week's match against uh, um, Leicester A, um, a good spirited match from you and KP. Um, before we talked about you real quick, uh, I had no idea idea that KP was that quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I think KP has come on leaps and bounds. I mean, I, I remember when I first met him, trained with him and played with him. It was back in the beginning of 2019 at the America Rugby Championship. Um, there was this, you know, young kid, um, big guy. I mean, he's lost some weight. <laughs> he could be yeah. the first one to admit that in a good way. Um, but he was just aggressive and strong and, and everything, you know, raw talent. Now, I mean, even within the last, you know, 18 months, he's developed his game massively. And it's probably due to the fact that he's at Saracens, I think he has these aspirations to really get himself involved now with USA Rugby uh, in the squad, and and he, yeah, he's um, it's uh, he's scary actually how much pace he's got. Yeah. Um, I don't want to boost his ego too much, but he's um, <laughs> no, he's going really well. I think he's training really well. He, he's obviously playing and putting performances in, and 
and I mean the kid's young, so you know he's he's got it all in front of him, which is great. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Uh, hopefully for USA Rugby, we can tap into that for sure over the next however many years. Well, it's exciting to see uh, his growth already, um, and then going into the USA camp hopefully soon. Uh, you put him and Big Joe together, and you're looking at two way different hookers. Absolutely, but then on top of that, you've got someone like Dylan Fawcett, who's oh, right. you know, Butch, who's a um, quality player in his own right. I haven't seen Butch for a while now, but we, we stay in contact, and we're blessed, really, you know, to have some brilliant hookers in that position. Um, and, uh, you know, I know there's more out there in, in the States um, who... Um, who, who, who are also quality. So it's actually, we're lucky. It's almost annoying that we've got so many good hookers, you know, because you've uh, <laughs> got this one position in particular, which is just really solid. But it's great, you know, it's great for great for the nation um, and uh, great for the USA rugby. So talking about you against uh, Leicester, uh, how did it feel to be back on the pitch, especially at number 10? Yeah, it was great. It was, um, you're right. Actually playing number 10, I haven't, I haven't done that since the kind of beginning of the year. When I was back at Bedford, um, so um, a lot, I, I, I enjoy both positions, uh, fly half and fullback. I like to think I probably, you know, play them in my own different way. If I'm playing fullback, I try and act like another number ten on the pitch. I mean, that's the whole reason I think I get put there. Bring in my kicking game, bring in my hopefully playmaking ability, and, and um, you know, I, I enjoy the high ball. So. I do enjoy 15, but at the same time, 10 is obviously where I kind of naturally fit in and I enjoy getting my hands on the ball and, and, and to have that opportunity on Saturday was great. Uh, you're right, it was, uh, oh, I don't know when the last game I played, it was in the yeah. Premiership back in the end of September, or something like that. So there was a little bit of a, of a gap and it was nice just to get away from training and actually have this game to kind of focus on and the other brilliant thing was we actually had, I think just over a thousand people were allowed uh, in, into the stadium as like a COVID testing protocols game. And honestly, I am never going to take crowds at grounds for granted now because it, it just made such a difference, like running out into the pitch and hearing like this, this roar. And, and it's a thousand people felt like genuinely five, 10,000 people. So credit to the Saris fans. It was, it was really good. The atmosphere and, it just gives you that buzz as a player, you know, reminds you of why, why you play the game in many aspects. Yeah, yeah. It's not for the training. Like, geez, I, I'm bored enough for training. I've been doing it for a while now. Um, but it's for the, for the games and then the atmosphere. And, and you got a little bit of a, a taste of that on, on Saturday. And I enjoyed it. I think that the boys enjoyed it. We got a good result. You know, you've got to remember it's a first game, a preseason game, which there's going to be mistakes. But I think as a whole, um, we, were, we were pretty happy. That's good. I know uh, you started off a bit slow, too. They jumped out of the gates on you. Um, but uh, it was good to see the team bounce back and, and get that win, you know? Yeah, and that's really crucial, I think. You've, you've got to have the, the element of transition. You know, can you go from ultimately letting in a try, letting in points, which happens in sport, but can you bounce back? You know, teams who make mistake after the mistake, don't learn from it, you know, get into a bit of a rut. Um, you see that in all sports. So the ability to bounce back is is great, and and I think you know that that for us as a group, it was a young team that we had. I mean, I, I was genuinely one of the oldest players on the pitch, which I couldn't believe. I was like, I'm 27. <laughs> what the heck? But at the same time, you know, it's it's great to see as as a group, and particularly the youngsters, you know, have that kind of bounce back mentality. And, and like you say, um, they Leicester played well at the beginning, but we we came back into it and, and got the momentum. Well, and you know it's a good day for uh, a player from the T when they put together an entire highlight reel of kicks. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Yeah, oh, it's just um, kickers all around the world will, will, will tell you, you know, you have your, your good days and, and unfortunately there are some bad days in there as well. Um, and uh, hopefully you don't have too many bad days. But uh, no, it was for me, it was just I was really simple uh, on the weekend. I didn't try and overthink it. Uh, tried to enjoy, you know, getting back out there and, and kicking him in front of the post, and um, yeah, when they, when they come off the boot, boot nicely like he did on Saturday, you, you feel good about yourself, and it's nice to get the plaudits, but at the same time, you know, I, I'm very aware that um, I need to keep working hard and keep my consistency going, um, not just in my kicking, but my all-round game. So um, yeah, it was nice to, to get the messages, but uh, have to quickly move on, uh, I'm sure. 
with this downtime, you, you're you having a ton of right. You're now doing work with uh, 15s Rugby or XV Rugby. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, so the XV is a rugby media um, or specific rugby media subscription uh, site uh, for basically rugby fans all around the world. Uh, it really is, you know, the, the, the honor that I have is that I'm writing, hopefully can do some more pieces for them, but the 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 journalists that are on there are some of the best, you know, uh, right around the world. And I feel very honored to kind of be, uh, be allowed, uh, to, to come in and, and write a piece. And, um, it's just, for me, it's great to have, you know, in my free time, I like telling stories. I like getting out there and, and investigating and, and getting interviews. And actually this particular piece, which I, I just wrote, which is really, I think, um, very current, in terms of the rugby world uh, at the moment, uh, a friend of mine, I played with him, ex-teammate in Northampton, uh, has uh, at the age of 26, sorry, 27, um, as, oh no, I think he is still 26, sorry. He um, He's left the professional game. Uh, contract situation was up in the air. He had a whole load of injuries and it was very dark and, 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 and bleak times for him and he just made the decision to, to step away and go into normal business life which you know sounds probably for the normal person listening oh well that's fine like you've had your rugby career move on but it's just not it's it was his whole identity and it was just changed kind of overnight so the ability to, to to bring that story across was i think really meaningful not just for me personally because he's a friend but also i think for the whole rugby world to hear it from players um and for players to hear it as well because you know the whole thing is is our careers don't last forever. You've got to be ready to transition into that next chapter. And hopefully if you can do something about it now, even though you're playing rugby, you can make that transition a lot more smoother. So I enjoyed writing the piece. And as I say, hopefully we'll uh, look to write some more. That's brilliant. Oh, well, that's it. Nice and quick. Uh, I can't wait to see you back on the pitch again. And also looking forward to more of these articles as well. Cheers. Thanks, Bill. Take care. Thanks, Bill.